And I think we'll begin to see, uh, particularly as the news seeps through of big losses, lots of young Russian men being killed in the field in Ukraine, uh, there is going to be a backlash against Mr Putin and people are going to start saying enough is enough. A thousand people are already said to have been forced from their homes. Joining us now is Labour's Stephen Kinnock, Shadow Minister for Immigration. Good morning to you. Hello, good morning. So amid this wave of refugees coming into Europe from Ukraine, what should we in Britain be doing? Well, the, um, all the intelligence that we're picking up is that the vast majority of people who are coming to those countries that border Ukraine uh, intend to stay there because their intention is to go back to Ukraine as soon as the occupying Russian forces have been defeated and expelled from their country. Uh, and so I think the top priority now for the UK government has to be to provide those bordering countries with all of the humanitarian assistance that they can possibly need uh, and to support those governments in uh, whatever they need in terms of helping uh, the people that are coming into their country to settle and to be uh, provided with uh, the, the basic necessities that they need whilst we uh, uh, work on supporting the uh, Ukrainian resistance, uh, arming the Ukrainians, uh, providing them with all of the weapons that we possibly can, and of course continuing to uh, bear down on um, Mr Putin and his cronies in terms mm. of sanctions. Uh, that, I think, has got to be the top priority because the vast majority of people leaving Ukraine intend to remain in those bordering countries yes. uh, because they want to get back into their country as soon as they can. But if they do come to our, our chores, Stephen Kinnock, should we be turning them back to the first safe uh, country that they reach? Well, no, we have to make sure that we have a clear strategy in place. I, I think it's got to be based on a clear understanding of what's going on in those bordering countries. Uh, so that we can then uh, create safe and legal passages uh, for people to come to our country who are fleeing Ukraine and who do not wish uh, to remain in uh, Poland and Romania and, and those bordering countries. But until we've got a clearer picture of what the people movements are likely to be, uh, it, it's difficult to have a, a clear plan and strategy in place. The top priority, I think you know, this is a very, very fast moving situation, very large number of moving parts. The top priority now is to take this step by step. And first of all, the Foreign Secretary and the Home Secretary should be uh, sitting down with their counterparts in Poland and Romania uh, and the other bordering countries and getting a really clear picture of what's happening on the ground and then working with our European partners in a coordinated way uh, so that we can ensure that we do, it, may, we do uh, give safe passage uh, to those who wish to uh, leave Ukraine uh, in fear of their lives. With regard to working with our European partners in a coordinated way, uh, we have a raft of sanctions on the table. Some of them the G7 nations have all signed up to, others uh, left so. Are you frustrated that we've yet to dis disconnect Russia's banking system from the international SWIFT payment system? Yes, I think that it's a pity that that hasn't happened. Uh, I think, you know, what I would gently say to our European partners and friends and allies is that we are in now a, a, a battle for democracy. Uh, we are uh, in a battle for our values and for our uh, national security and for our interests. As Europe, uh, this isn't just one European country. Uh, this is about all of us. And I think it's really important that political leaders across Europe make the case very clearly to their people that you, know, you, you don't get democracy for free. You have to fight for it. Sometimes you even have to pay a price for it, but it is a price worth paying because the alternative is to allow a tyrant, a gangster, a thug such as Mr. Putin to uh, run riot across Europe. And, and we cannot allow that to happen. And with that in mind, do you think we should be withdrawing our diplomats uh, from Moscow and uh, sending their counterparts home? Yeah, I, th I think there's a, a, an increasingly strong case for that. But I think that we also have to recognise that uh, wherever possible, a, wherever there might be a chink of light in terms of some kind of engagement and discussion, we should try always to just keep that door open. Do you open think there because, is a chink of light? Because diplomacy. Uh, it, it, I, I think it doesn't. It looks very, very bleak. But the fact that China abstained on the UN motion 
I think was interesting. I think the fact that Kazakhstan uh, is saying that it won't be uh, supporting uh, some of the Russian military uh, endeavor. There are small gaps beginning to open up in the so-called alliance that Mr. Putin thinks he has around him. And when we see those gaps opening up, we have to be ready to use that leverage to push home any small chink that we may see. And, and sometimes uh, that does require uh, some kind of dialogue and people uh, being able to at least be able to answer a telephone. Uh, that, I think, is something that we need to keep under review very closely. Uh, and we have to ensure that the UK government is getting the balance right between being absolutely as tough as we can, but also seeing opportunities to push home any advantage that we may have. And that is what successful international relations is about. Stephen Kennett, you've lived in Russia. You know Russia well. How do you think this invasion is going to be perceived at the grassroots in Russia? I lived and worked in Russia for three years. I was director of the British Council in St. Petersburg and the, the Russian people, they do not want to be isolated. They are a friendly and open people who want to uh, actually have their hopes and aspirations realized and they know they can't do that. They don't want to roll back to the Soviet Union, which is what Mr. Putin seems to want. They don't have an imperialist agenda at all. That is the ordinary Russian people. Tragically, they're led by a government that is deeply corrupt uh, and has this uh, bizarre, paranoid worldview about everybody uh, encircling Russia and wanting to uh, and, and wanting to take advantage of them. Uh, that is not broadly shared. It is so heartening to see the protests. Uh, that, of course, they're not huge because people are so frightened of what the Russian authorities will will mm. do uh, if you're caught protesting in the streets. But nevertheless, there is a strong and growing sense of resistance. There's going to be some big protests, I think, on Sunday, which is the seventh anniversary of the assassination of Boris Nemtsov, uh, one of the great pro-democracy leaders in Russia. And I think we'll begin to see, uh, particularly as the news seeps through of big losses, lots of young Russian men being killed in the field in Ukraine, uh, there is going to be a backlash against Mr. Putin and people are going to start saying enough is enough. And, and finally, um, given that Ukraine had been warning of this invasion for, for so long, and given that our diplomatic efforts in the form of Liz Truss going to Moscow, Boris Johnson's phone calls with Vladimir Putin, do you, given that they clearly failed because an invasion took place, do you think we owe the Ukrainians an apology? Have we let them down? I think that uh, Putin illegally annexed Ukraine, uh, Crimea in 2014. So we've had uh, six years to um, digest that fact. And s enough has simply not been done. Uh, it's awful that um, dirty Russian money has been allowed to wash around in London for so long that the British government since 2014 has not implemented the sanctions that were mm. put onto Mr Putin's cronies in anything like the way they should have uh, after the annexation of Crimea. Uh, companies' house not reformed, uh, unexplained wealth orders hardly ever used. Uh, and, of course, the Conservative Party has taken £4 million pounds in donations from people with yes. very close connections to the Russian state. So we do owe Ukrainian people an apology for failing since 2014 uh, to take to get our own house in order and to act with greater strength against Mr Putin. Stephen Kinnock, Labour MP and Shadow Minister for Immigration, thank you so much for your time this morning. Mm -hmm.